Hello everyone and welcome to MCQ discussion series with me Sanjay Dekshit. So today we'll be talking about MCQs in pharmacology and the topic for today is antihistamines. Let's have a look. Which of the methods of countering the histamine actions is not used clinically? Hastening the destruction of histamine by histaminase, preventing the release of histamine, using antihistamines that block the histamine receptors, using adrenaline or physiological antagonist. Preventing the release of histamine is, is done by using mast cell stabilizers, right? So as to decrease the release of histamine from the mast cells. Again, antihistamines are often used to block the histamine receptors. It is what the topic today is about. Adrenaline is a physiologic antagonist of histamine and it is also used in some cases, especially so in case of anaphylaxis. So the only method that is not used in clinical settings is hastening the destruction of histamine by the use of histaminase. So A is the answer. Let us move to the next question. S1 antagonist has all the functions except antivertigo, decreased gastric acid secretion, antipyretic sedation. Here we're talking about S1 antagonist, right? So antivertigo, antipyretic and sedation, all of the functions can be seen with S1 antagonist. However, decreased gastric acid secretion is a function of S2 receptors. So it would be seen with S2 receptor blockers like ranitidine, nizatidine, famotidine. Decreasing gastric acid secretion is primarily the effect of S2 blockers and not of S1 antagonist. Which of the following drug can be used for preventing motion sickness when given half an hour prior to commencing the journey? Motion sickness is something that is associated with C and long winding roads, right? So we ought to select a drug that has got penetration into the CNS and has got anticholinergic action. So if we look into it, the best drug that fits into the given picture is cyclizine. Because the, the first generation drugs, they penetrate into the, into the CNS and have got anticholinergic effect, we use the first generation agents. Uh, cyclazine is the only drug that is listed from the first generation. So it is the, the drug of choice out here. Here is scopolamine, the muscarinic antagonist. It is the best drug that is effective in motion sickness and as opposed to antihistamines, which is effective only when they are given half an hour to one hour before commencing the journey, the sco spo scopolamine can also be useful when for the treatment of motion sickness, not just the prophylaxis. Okay, if you were to prescribe an antihistamine for a senior patient of, 60, of 75 years of age, which of the following drugs would you prefer? Chlorpheniramine, loratidine, promethazine, Diphenhydramine. Here, what you ought to remember is that you are try you are trying to prescribe an antihistaminic drug for an elderly patient, right? Here, the question doesn't give you much details as to what is the problem with the patient, but then it says that you ought to prescribe an antihistaminic drug. So, if you look into the drugs that are listed out here, they are chlorpheniramine, loratidine, promethazine, and diphenhydramine. You see that three of the options are the first generation antihistamines and one out here is the second generation out antihistamine. So if you can't, if you, if you don't know the answer as to what could be the answer, you still pick up loratidine, right? Because it is the second generation and all others belong to the first generation. Yes, loratidine out here is the correct answer. And this is the correct answer because loratidine, it is a lower non-sedative, newer non-sedative kind of antihistamine.
So although little clinical testing has been done, the second generation antihistamines are preferred in elderly patients more than 65 years of age, and especially those with impaired cognitive function because of the sedative and anticholinergic effect of first generation drugs. The question has been developed from Goodman Gilman Pharmacology, 13th edition, page 718. Okay, let's move to the next question. Which of the following S1 blocker has high anticholinergic activity? Chlorpheniramine, estemizole, cetirizine, fexofenadine. Here we are talking about S1 blocker and then it ought to have a high anticholinergic activity, right? So if you look at the options given again, there is one drug that belongs to the first generation antihistamine and the rest of the three drugs, estemizole, cetirizine, and fexofenadine, they belong to the second generation antihistamines, that is the newer non-sedative class. So the answer out here is chlorpheniramine, which has got high anticholinergic activity. The first generation agents, they are generally known to have high anticholinergic activity. The drug listed out here is chlorpheniramine. Chlorpheniramine comes as chlorpheniramine malleate. Diphenhydramine, the S1 antagonist, can reverse the extrapyramidal side effects caused by antipsychotic drugs. Which of the following adverse effects could be attributed to diphenhydramine? Nervousness and anxiety, nausea, muscarinic increased in bladder tone, sedation. Again, diphenhydramine is the first generation antihistamine, and the first generation antihistamines are known to cause sedation, right? So the adverse effect that is associated with diphenhydramine is sedation. The S1 blockers, they do not activate the muscarinic receptors or cause vertigo. Some drugs are in fact used to relieve vertigo or motion sickness, and they do not cause nervousness or anxiety. Diphenhydramine, it is a potent sedative with S1 and M3 blocking actions. Second generation antihistamics used in allergic rhinitis are fexofenadine, azelastine, all of these, desloratidine. So here we are talking about the case of allergic rhinitis, right? So if you look at the drugs listed, fexofenadine, azelastine, desloratidine, all of them are second generation drugs. And all of them can be used in case of allergic rhinitis, right? So the answer out here is C, all of these. Because S1 antihistamines cross the placenta, caution is advised for women who are or may become pregnant. Which of the following drugs have evidence of teratogenic effect in animal studies? Chlorpheniramine, fexofenadine, cetirizine, loratidine. This question might be, a, might be a bit tricky for you guys, right? In that you ought to know as to which drug has the evidence of teratogenic effect. Uh, the drug that is known to have teratogenic effect out here is fexofenadine, right? Let us look into the explanation. Several antihistamines like azelastine, hydroxyzine, and fexofenadine, they had teratogenic effect in animal studies, whereas others like chlorpheniramine, diphenhydramine, cetirizine, and loratidine, they did not. And this was published by Simons and Simons in 2011. However, a systematic review published in 2014 concluded that antihistamines are unlikely to be strong risk factors for major birth defects. This question was again was developed from Goodman and Gilman Pharmacology, 13th edition, page number 718. The non-sedative antihistamines are all except one. Fexofenadine, levocetrizine, desloratidine, cinerizine. Okay. You all know that fexofenadine, levocetrizine, and desloratidine are the second generation drugs. So they are non sedative antihistamines. Cinerizine is the first generation drug, right? So the answer out here is cinerizine. The drug which blocks both H1 and 5-SG2 receptor and is said to be an appetite stimulant is ciproheptadine. Ritanserin, Ondansetron, Phenoxybenzamine. 
So here we need a drug that not just blocks S1 receptor, but also 5-ST2 receptor. And it is used as appetite stimulant. The drug out here is ciproheptadine. So ciproheptadine uniquely has both antihistaminic and antiserotonin activity by antagonizing the 5-ST2A receptor. Ciproheptadine causes drowsiness. It also has significant anticholinergic effects and can increase appetite. This is taken from Goodman and Gilman Pharmacology, 13th edition, page number 719. Okay, the question says, all of the following statements are true about second generation antihistamine agents, except these may possess additional anti-allergic anti mechanisms. These lack anticholinergic actions. These do not impair psychomotor performance. These possess high anti-motion sickness activity. As we said, in case of motion sickness earlier, right, the drugs that possess motion sickness activity, they should be able to penetrate the CNS and they should also have anticholinergic actions. So the answer out here is we're looking for an exception to the true statements, right? So the answer is D out here. The second generation S1 blockers, they lack the CNS penetration and also anti muscarinic effects. So they are devoid of any activity in motion sickness. Histamine blocker in a stomach act through decreasing CAMP in a stomach, increasing CAMP in a stomach, decreasing IP3 in a stomach, increasing IP3 in a stomach. Here, the question asks about the mechanism of action of histamine in the stomach, right? And CMP stands for cyclic adenosine monophosphate and IP3 stands for inositol triphosphate. So the answer out here is decreasing IP3 in the stomach. The mechanism of histamine blocker in the stomach is through decreasing the IP3 or inositol triphosphate. Okay, uh, a highway truck driver has profuse rhinorrhea and sneezing. Which amongst the following drugs would you prescribe for him? Diamond hydronate, cetrazine, phenyramine, promethazine. So this is a case of rhinorrhea and sneezing, sneezing, and then you need to prescribe an antihistaminic drug, right? If you look at the, all the options listed, diamond hydronate, phenyramine, promethazine, they all belong to the first generation, while Option B, cetirizine, is the second generation drug. Here, we are talking about a highway truck driver, right? So we don't want to get him sedated. So we ought to prescribe him a newer non sedative drug. The one listed out here is cetirizine. So this is the answer. Phenidamine, promethazine, and diamond hydronate, they are all first generation agents liable to cause sedation and are not suitable for a truck driver. Cetrazine is second generation agent which is less liable to induce cetrazine, sleepiness. Now, levocetrazine, like isomers, are known to cause even lesser sedation and they are preferred lately. Fexofenadine is a metabolic product of another second generation agent which was discontinued for its side effects on the heart. The agent is loratidine, estremizole, cetrazine, tofenadine. From among the drugs listed out here, estremizole and tofenadine, they were both discontinued for the side effects on the heart, causing torsus P points, right? So loratidine and cetrazine are not the option. So it could be either estremizole or tofenadine. If you know further, then fexofenadine is the metabolic product of terfenadine. So the answer out here is terfenadine.
Histamine plays a vital role in initiating the body's immune response to the presence of foreign antigens and pathogens. A primary source of histamine released during the inflammatory conditions are interchromophil-like cells, mast cells, presynaptic nerve terminals, beta cells. The release of histamine at the level of GI tract occurs through interchromophil-like cells or ELC, right? However, mostly, when it comes to initiating the body's immune response, it is the mast cells. The mast cells play a central role in inflammatory and immediate allergic reactions. They release potent inflammatory mediators like histamine, proteases, chemotactic factors, cytokines, arachidonic acid metabolites. These chemical mediators affect the vasculature, small, smooth muscle, connective tissue, nerve endings, mucus glands, and other inflammatory cells. Which of the following antihistamines is useful for preventing minor nausea and vomiting episodes associated with anti-cancer therapy? Diphenhydramine, loratidine, cyclazine, promethazine. Normally, when it comes to nausea and vomiting episodes with anti-cancer therapy, it is said that the nausea and vomiting episodes that are seen with anti-cancer therapy are normally re relatively severe ones, right? So they would need 5-HT3 antagonists like ondansetron, granisetron like essence. But if it is a case of minor nausea and vomiting, then one can also use antihistamine drugs. The drug that can be given out here is promethazine beta because it has got additional antimetic property apart from antihistaminic actions. So only promethazine is useful in treating nausea and vomiting subsequent to chemotherapy or radiation therapy for malignancies. However, other more effective antiemetic drugs are av available, like 5-HT3 antagonists, ondan citron, ganicitron, right? The question again here is developed from Goodman and Goodman Pharmacology, 13th edition, page 718. Identify the true statement about fexofenadine. It has high affinity for central S1 receptors. Terfenadine is an active metabolite of this drug. It undergoes high first pass metabolism in the liver. It does not block cardiac potassium channels. We said earlier that fexofenadine is a second generation antihistaminic drug, so it does not pass into the CNS. So there is no way that it has got high affinity for central S1 receptors, right? So A is incorrect. Terfenadine, we said earlier that this is the precursor of fexofenadine and it is not the metabolite of the drug fexofenadine. So this is not, uh, not an option. It has got lesser, it doesn't have first pass metabolism in the liver. so. It does not undergo first pass metabolism in the liver, so C is not an option. Uh, it does not block potassium, potassium channels in the heart. This is a true statement. Do terf terfenadine and estimizole, they are known to block the potassium, uh, potassium channels in the heart and thereby lead to dorsal three points and cardiac arrhythmias. That, that is the reason they were banned, right? But however, fexofenadine, which is the active metabolite of terfenadine, it, it is not known to block the potassium channels in the heart. Okay, it's like the same question being repeated, right? The antihistamine drug that can cause cardiac arrhythmia as high dose by blocking cardiac potassium channels, it is most likely to be Fexofenadine, loratidine, estremizole, levocetrazine. Well, earlier we talked about fexofenadine, but then the drug that was associated is terfenadine, right? Out there. And we said that terfenadine and estremizole, these were the true drugs that were banned. So the option out here is estremizole. Estremizole and terfenadine both were discontinued for causing torsos D points. They cause cardiac arrhythmia at high dose by blocking the cardiac potassium channels. Which of the following antihistamines taken by lactating mothers may, co may cause symptoms such as irritability, drowsiness, or respiratory depression in the nursing infant? Levocetrazine, cetrazine, loratidine, diphenhydramine. So 
So here, this is a case of lactating mothers, right? And the symptoms such as irritability, drowsiness, and respiratory depression may be seen. If you look at the options that are listed, it is liver cetirizine, cetirizine, and loratadine. They are all second generation, while the third gen the fourth option is diphenhydramine. So the answer out here is diphenhydramine. Antihistamines can be excreted in a small amount in breast milk, and first generation antihistamines are implicated in causing above mentioned side effects in the infants. So, here the first generation isn't being diphenhydramine. This is the option answer out here. This is again taken from Goodman Goodman Pharmacology, 13th edition, page 718. H1 antihistaminic having best topical activity and therefore is employed as topical eye drops for the treatment of allergic conjunctivitis is estamizole, azelastine, loratidine, cetrazine. Here we are talking about a drug that has caused topical activity and therefore is used as topical eye drop. Right? So the drug out here is azelastine. Azelastine, amidastine, and epinastine. These are employed as topical drops for the treatment of allergic conjunctivitis. Azelastine is also available as a nasal spray for treating symptoms of allergic or vasomotor rhinitis. Epinastine and azelastine, they exhibit mast cell stabilizing and anti-inflammatory properties too. The question is developed from Goodman and Gilman Pharmacology, 13th edition, page 719. Anti-vertigo drug, drug which modulates calcium channels and has high prominent labyrinthine suppressant activity is flemastine, ciproheptadine, cetrazine, cinarizine. From among the drugs listed out here, cinerizine possesses anti-vertigo. Anti cinerizine is the anti-vertigo drug, and it is known to modulate the calcium channels and has got labyrinthine supp suppressant activity as well. Therefore, is useful in motion sickness too. Which of the following is the main state drug in the treatment of severe anaphylaxis? Antihistamines, beta blockers, corticosteroids, adrenaline. So we all know that when it comes to the treatment of severe anaphylaxis, antihistamines, corticosteroids, and adrenaline, all of them are used. Beta blockers are not preferred, right? Apart from beta blockers, all three of them are used. But then the main state drug in the treatment of severe anaphylaxis, well, it's not antihistamines this time, though this is the topic for today, right? So the answer out here is adrenaline. When it comes to the treatment of severe anaphylaxis, where autocoids other than histamine are important, the mainstay of therapy is epinephrine or adrenaline. Antihistamines have only subordinate or adjuvant role. The same is also true in case of severe angioedema, where laryngeal swelling constitutes a threat to life. And corticosteroids may be useful in cases where people are primarily using corticosteroids for different therapies like asthma and COPD. Beta blockers, they are not used for anaphylaxis. The question is again developed from Goodman Gilman Pharmacology, 13th edition, page 718. Use of this over-the-counter drug has been associated with poor academic performance in children and increased incidence of automobile accidents, increased work injuries, and a significant decline in cognitive function in the elderly. Identify the drug. Diphenhydramine, fexofenadine, ranitidine, loratidine. The listed from from among the listed drugs out here, ranitidine is the S2 receptor blocker, right? And loratidine and fexofenadine, they are the second generation antihistamines. So they cause less sedation and thereby less automobile accidents. So the drug out here is diphenhydramine. First generation H1 antihistamines have significant side effects. These drugs are commonly used for the treatment of symptoms of allergy and colds and to produce nighttime sedation. The drug diphenhydramine, it belongs to the first generation antihistamine. Okay, that is all for today. Thank you. Have a nice day.
see you in coming upcoming lecture that's all